Hello students and welcome to my channel. In this session we will be learning Standard 9 Geography Chapter No. 11 Transport and Communication Part 1. In the first session we will be learning about transport. So let us begin by understanding what is transportation. As student you know that we have learned in our earlier classes what is a transportation. Transportation means moving people and goods from one place to another place. Transportation plays an important part in the nation's economy and also helps for the growth of globalization. Now let us revise what are the modes of transport. The modes of transport, it describes the way the goods are transported from one place to other place. So there are different modes of transport. Those are Railways, roadways, airways, waterways, pipelines and multimodal. We have already learned in our previous classes about the various modes of transport like the railways, roadways, airways and waterways. So let's get information about the pipelines. So pipeline transport, it is a long distance transportation of a liquid or a gas through a system of pipes and pipelines typically which take it to a market area for consumption that is called to be as the pipeline transport and the next one is the multimodal so multimodal transport it is a transportation of goods under a single contract but performed with at least two different modes of transport so you can say that multimodal transport is a combination of different modes of transport in order to facilitate or to make the transportation much faster so when it comes to the mode of transportations like the multimodal it means there are more than one kind of vehicle which are necessary to take the goods to their final destination by the use of various modes of transportation like the trucks trains ship and airplanes in the picture you can see there are various modes of transport are used and so this is called as to be a multimodal transport. This transport system brings about the faster rate of transportation from one place to other. Now as we have learned that there are various modes of transportation. So to better understand that which mode of transport would be convenient for you for us to use let us see some examples given on page number 82 of your textbook. Let us see the first condition. Suppose you have to reach Bhopal from Nagpur that is in Maharashtra and there is some emergency and you have to reach to Bhopal from Nagpur. Which mode of transport would you use then? Understand the condition, it is an emergency that you have to reach Bhopal from Nagpur. Then definitely we would take a flight from Bhopal to Nagpur. Reason? Because airways are the fastest means of transportation and it would require the minimum amount of time which is ideal in case of an emergency. So we would take airways in this condition. Let us see the second condition. You have to reach Kanyakumari carrying the message of cleanliness and there is no time limit for it. Now here is no condition. There is lot of time and you have to reach Kanyakumari. Now suppose say from Maharashtra you have to go to Kanyakumari from Pune or from Mumbai you have to reach Kanyakumari. Then which mode of transport would we use? Now there is no condition. There is no time barrier. You can use as much time to travel or to reach to Kanyakumari. Then we would take a train as a mode of transport. Since there is no time limit, railways would be an economically a wiser option to reach Kanyakumari. Now let us see the next condition. In the picture you can see the Alfonso mango. As you all know that Alfonso mangoes are very famous from Konkan. And many of the mangoes are exported from Konkan to through many parts of the world. Now the condition is we have to send the Alfonso mango from Konkan to Arab countries. Which mode of transport would be used then? It would be the waterways. And we will use the ship to transport the mangoes. 
because Konkan region is well connected to the Arab countries through the sea route and it is the best possible way to transport the mangoes. Let us see the next condition. Indraini variety of rice has to be exported from Pune, from Maharashtra to Cape Town to South Africa at low cost. Then which mode of transport would we use? First thing is that we would first use the railway route to transport the rice from Pune to Mumbai. Later, it would you we can use the sea freight to send the rice from Mumbai to Cape Town. Because railways and waterways seems to be a right choice for transporting the Indrani rice from Pune to Cape Town. So we have used here two modes of transport that is the railways and the waterways. The next condition, a larger scale of vegetables in Nandurbar has taken place but it is not fetching a good price. The Nagpur Surat National Highway and the Surat Bhusavar Railway passes through the district. Then which mode of transport would we use then? So first, we can use the Surat Bhusavar Railway line to carry the loaded truck to railway station nearest to Nagpur Surat National Highway using the Roro modes. Roro modes, we are going to learn more about it in the next session. From there, the truck would use the highways and carry on the goods or the vegetables to the nearest market where they would get a good price for their produce. Let us see the next condition. Now suppose you have to go to Singapore from a village or a town and you have 10 days to do so. What would you do? First thing is that we would go to the nearest metropolitan city which offers us the most competitive airfares to go to Singapore. Then we would book an air ticket using an online travel portal which would offer discount on the air bookings. And after all the procedure we can go for Singapore. So in this condition we have learned that here there are more than one mode of transport use that is from town to village or to the city, metropolitan city, either a railway or the roadway is used and from, from the metropolitan city to Singapore, airways, airways are used. So through these examples, we have understood that according to the condition, we can choose our modes of transport. Now you must have realized that while traveling or transporting goods, we have to consider many things and we have learned that in some of the conditions which we give, which were given in a form of a examples to you now if there are many ways and means of transport available then we can think about those alternatives which are those alternatives those are the roadways railways waterways airways and pipelines these are the ways or means by which transportation can be done. Now let us learn the factors that we should keep, keep in mind while selecting the routes and means of transport. So let us begin learning the factors to be considered for transportation. So let us start with the first that is the important factor that is physiography. Physiography it means a physical condition like is the region a mountainous region or are there more rivers in this area or is it a snowfall area or is it a plateau or a plain region this uh, this matters more when we consider the first factor that is physiography because transport facilities develop well in the region with the plains while the region or the areas which has a higher relief or whether it is a mountainous region then it is difficult to set the transportation system in this area. So one thing has to be remembered or kept in mind that is the region becomes devoid of transportation routes if the physiography of that region is not suitable for the construction of the transportation route. Now that route can be a railway route or a roadway route. The next important factor is the routes and the means. So when the transportation is to be carried that time, the routes and means are also one of the important factor to be considered because 
according to the physiography and the region we have to decide we, ha we, we have to find the means which are available in that region now suppose the transportation has to be done through a mountainous region or through the deserted region or through the plains or the plateaus so depending upon that region we have to choose the means of transportation that is we have to find out that which means are means of transportation are available in that region and next thing is the routes so when the transportation has to be done that time if there are many options or many routes are passing through that region then we have to find or it becomes economically it becomes economical to find a route which is a short route to carry the transportation to that particular destination so that way it will be time consuming and also fuel consuming so this is also one of the important factor routes and means the next factor is market so in the urban areas like pune mumbai or nagpur markets are more developed your goods are also available in plenty and also they are sold in plenty but it is not necessary that all the goods which are sold in this market in urban areas they are manufactured or they are made in that places like pune mumbai or nagpur but many times they even have to be imported from the other state or from the other district so in this area the transportations are more developed because these are connected to many of the other states or other district so market is also one of the factor to be considered for transportation the next factor is the climatic condition so climatic condition or climatic change this is an important factor because it is likely to happen that due to the change in the climate like storm or snowfall or heavy rainfall or due to the flood condition there would cause a delay as well as a permanent or a temporary closures of the routes this may lead to the obstruction for the transportation purposes so it may cause a inconvenience for the transportation facilities also or it may cause a delay too so transportation routes are to be developed keeping in mind the climatic condition or the climatic factor of that region so that would not cause any uh, obstacles in the way of the transportation the next factor is time so as we have already learned into the conditions which we had done in the beginning of the lesson that if it is a matter of saving the time then we can use the airways we can use the fastest means of transport and also if the products are to be transported or the products which are to be exported or to be imported those are the perishable commodities or those are very fragile commodities then either a railway or the airways can be the better means for the transportation of the goods the next factor is duration so duration it if it is a short duration journey or transportation then a roadway would be a better option for transportation of the goods and the products but if at all it is a long duration journey of transportation as such a time airways or the railways that would be the best option so duration also is an important factor for transportation the next factor is the products so the size and the weight of the good it plays a major role in deciding which mode of transportation to be used now land and air transport they caters mainly for the light and the small transportation like small shipments of the goods while railways and sea routes they caters for the heavy goods transportation so deciding which means of transport should we use it is all dependent upon what products is been transported so air and land transport are usually the best option to use for those products which are of high value or which are very delicate products so those can be transported by the airways but if there are and also if there are perishable commodities or perishable goods are there at such a time the transportation has to be done in the span of 2 to 3 days so care has to be taken that according to the product or according to the goods it has to be decided that which of the transportation or which mode of transportation should be used the next factor is the cost so when we have a choice or we have a alternative that which mode of transport should we use 
for the transportation of the goods and the products at such a time along with the mode of transport whether we are have a alternative of a roadway or a railway or the airways along with the mode even the budget or the cost of the uh, mode of transport is very important factor because the cost can vary based upon the type and the amount of goods